Welcome to part one of my Ultimate Doom Builder tutorial for Doom 2. Um, in this first video, I'm going to show you a little bit about getting Doom Builder configured, and then we're going to get started on building a Doom 2 map for limit removing or vanilla Doom 2. Um, this is not for Doom Builder 2 or Doom Builder X. Those are different applications that are a little older, a little less flexible. So make sure you're using Ultimate Doom Builder if you're following along. Anyway, uh, overview of this series. Basically, I'm going to look at just creating a map in video on video here while you guys watch along and I'm going to explain my process, um, talk about some of the features of Doom Builder and Doom, how to make things work, how, how you do things, keyboard shortcuts, commands, tips and tricks, all that good stuff. And along the way, we're gonna be building a Doom 2 map from scratch. Now, I don't really have anything super planned out. Uh, my Doom 2 mapping tends to be very stream of consciousness. I just draw stuff and see what inspires me on how to continue it. So I don't know what this is going to look like at all. Uh, but as far as video format, I'm hoping each video is fairly short. Uh, what we'll do is each video is going to add an area to the map and cover some features in Doom or Doom Builder as we go. I have here Ultimate Doom Builder. This is version R4160. Uh, for anyone who cares about those details. First thing I'm going to do, we're going to go through game configurations. So we're going to go to the tools menu, click game configurations, and you're going to see that there is a whole bunch of options here. Most of these you're not going to care about, to be honest. Uh, I'll, I'll give you a brief overview of some of them. You'll see like a game engine and a format. So here, this is Doom, Doom format that I have highlighted. That would be for Doom 1 for vanilla or limit removing. And you know, here's Doom 2. You can see I have that one kind of set up, Doom 1 not so much. We're gonna, for this tutorial series, we're gonna be using this one, Doom, Doom 2 format. Um, other formats that might be interesting, Boom, Doom 2. So if you wanted to create a Doom 2 map that is for Boom engines, uh, this is the one you would wanna use. And there's also GZ Doom UDMF down here. So if you're making maps specifically for GZ Doom, uh, this is the setting you're gonna wanna use. And what these settings change, they're going to change some of the features that are available in the editor, some of the things you're allowed to do with Doom, and there are quite a bit of differences between, for example, Doom 2 format and GZ Doom, Doom 2 format. So, GZ Doom Hexen, I was playing around with Hexen earlier, so I have that one set up. We're going to do Doom, Doom 2 format. You can see I have this selected on the left. You're going to want to add a resource. So. I'm going to click Add Resource, go to Wad File Resource, and you want to make sure, this is Doom 2, that you have a Doom2.wad selected. This will be your base resource for this game type. I've already added that, so I'm not actually going to do that. You can see it's in the list here. Node Builder, you shouldn't really have to mess with. Um, for testing, you're going to want to configure which game engine you're using. This series, because this is just a vanilla or limit removing Doom, we're going to use Crispy Doom, which is a very conservative port that's, you know, it's not too far off from vanilla. It does add some features, but it's pretty basic. You can see I also have GZ Doom and DSDA Doom in the list, so I could switch these for testing purposes if I wanted to. And if you need to add an engine, you just click the plus here, find EXE for, you know, here's Crispy Doom, for example, and you'll add that to the list. We're going to do Doom 2, Crispy Doom is set up, click OK. Let's create a new WAD file. We're going to go to File, New Map. Here's our game configurations that are enabled. I'm going to choose Doom, Doom 2 format. And level name, this will just be Map 01. And you can see, well, it's off the side. But this is, OK, there you there. You can see in the tooltip, this is my Doom 2 WAD that is configured as part of the UDB game configurations. So with all this set up, I'm just going to click OK, and we have a brand new empty map. Let's get a starting area kind of drawn up. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Control D, which is draw mode, and you'll see how my cursor changes. Now I can draw an area. So I'm just going to make some kind of area. I'm just going to draw a square, and this is not going to be anything specific. And I'm going to hit T to go to things mode. I'm going to right click and create a player one start. Hit OK. This is the minimum you need to do before you can even save in UDB. And I'm going to do save map. I'm going to pick a path and I'm just going to let this be called map one because for those purposes I don't care. Okay, so we've got a starting area drawn. 
We're going to test the game configuration. If I hit F9, it should launch Crispy Dune. And yeah, there we go. Here is our starting area. So, there we go. Close out of that. A couple of features of Doom Builder as we get started here. Um, you have different modes to select. So right now we are in thing mode. This allows us to interact with things where things are player starts, weapons, monsters, items, ammo, teleport targets, and so on. And you're going to activate that by hitting T for thing mode. There's also sector mode, which is S. This is going to allow you to highlight and control a sector. You can right click on a sector, to edit it, and you can see I can change floor, ceiling textures, heights, brightness, specials. L will be line def mode. This is for walls. You can see this room with four walls, four line defs. I can right click on one and I'll get a pop up for textures and flags and actions. And lastly, V is for vertex mode. I'm going to hit V and this will allow me to highlight vertices. Now where I tend to use this is for creating new vertices. So if I want to modify this room, say I want to just drag this down, I can just right click. It's going to create a new vertex and I can bring this down. If you want to delete a vertex, you can just highlight it and hit delete, or you can drag it into a neighbor and Doom Builder will do the same thing. Visual mode uh, is very important in UDB. I spend a lot of time in visual mode. You're going to access that by hitting Q. And what this is going to do is it's going to bring you sort of in game. This is going to be fairly limited. Um, this is not the full blown game. This is just giving you a preview mode, but you can move the mouse around and sort of get an idea for how things are going to look. Uh, you can move around. These are not WASD keys. This is ESDF, which is a little odd. That's just WASD, but it's one to the right. So if you're used to playing, you know, first person shooters, you're used to having your left hand here. Just take them, move them one key over. And this is, this is your keys for moving and sidestepping forward and backwards. And you have full mouse look with perspective correction and everything. There is no collision detection. So you can fly out of the area if you want and get like an overhead view or, you know, see how things look from outside the map. So really useful. Good to know you can do that. Now you'll see that my crosshair, it's highlighting whatever surface I'm pointing at. So here's a floor, a couple of walls, ceiling. While you're here in visual mode, you can interact with those. So if I wanted to just change the floor, I can point the cursor at it, right click the mouse, and here is the sector properties for that highlighted sector. So let's go ahead and change the floor. I'm just gonna click floor, look at all the textures. Um, do something outdoors. My mapping style tends to be very Doom 1-ish. So we're gonna kind of go for that sort of feel here. So for our starting area, let's just do, let's do this R Rock 20. And you'll see the floor changed. Next, we're gonna change the ceiling. Now, if you select a floor or a ceiling, it doesn't matter because they're the same sector. But, you know, depending on how complex your area is, one might be easier to see. So we're gonna go to ceiling and we're gonna make this the sky. Skies are a little weird here. The sky does not show up in this list. They're, they're special and it has to do with the way Doom actually renders the sky. Now you can type in a texture name. So I'm gonna highlight this and the one for a sky is always gonna be F sky one. There we go. Hit okay. Now we have a sky and you can see it even as a, oh, I don't know what you call that, but it's got the sky box effect. So it's no longer like a flat texture. And let's check our brightness. Brightness is 192, which is okay for outdoor areas. Now, another shortcut to know is the tab key. While you're in visual mode, this will turn enhanced rendering on and off. So if I don't want to see the sky texture, I can hit tab and now you'll see there's just this placeholder thing that looks like a flat. I hit tab again, we're back to seeing the, how, how the sky box is. A couple other keys that might be useful. Um, T, remember is thing mode. In visual mode, it turns things on and off. So you can see my player start disappeared. If I hit T again, it comes back. And if I hit it again, it's gonna show me it's a bounding box and the direction it's facing. So if your area is really cluttered and you wanna see stuff without things in the way, you can turn that off. Another key I like to use is B. B is for brightness. 
So that will toggle between full brightness, which is where everything is rendered at 256 brightness, or as if the uh, you know you're wearing the light amplif amplification goggles. It be again, and it goes back to normal. So we've got one sector. I want to cover some sector properties while we're here. So I'm going to right click, open up the sector window. Here's your ceiling, floor height. Um, not actually sure what offset is. That's not anything I use. It'll tell you what the sector height is and the brightness. One thing to note about brightness, brightness is a little weird in Doom. It is a byte value. So acceptable values are zero through, I believe 255. Either 255 or 256. Well, Doom Builder lets you put 256, but that might be wrong. Well, actually, it looks like I could put anything here. Um, Doom does not actually have 256 brightness levels. It's a little weird. So if you mouse over here so you can see the little numeric up down. Here, let me see if I can give you a, a close up. See those little up down controls? This changes your actual discernible brightness differences. You can see it's changing by, what is that, like 16 each time. And we can go all the way dark to zero. All the way bright is 256. The values between these clicks are just going to round down to whatever the nearest value is. So 128 is going to be the same as 129. It's going to be the same as 130. And so on. Those in-between values, just so you know, they don't actually exist. So... Uh, that caught me early on in my doom mapping because I was playing with all that and wondering why nothing changes and I was trying to do some really gradual lighting transitions and doom just does not have the granularity to actually do that. So we're going to go back to 192. 192 is sort of a good default value for outdoor areas and you'll just learn this as you go along. Now if you want to change ceiling and floor heights there's a few different ways to do that. Let me get my webcam thing back up. There you go. Now you can either manually change your heights here by typing them in. So change the ceiling height. Uh, you also have these little up down controls that will toggle it by eight at a time. A lot of times what I like to do while you're in visual mode, click a surface. So let's say I want to raise the ceiling. I'll click it, make sure it's highlighted. See how it's red now. And I can just use the mouse scroll wheel to pull that up and down now. So that's a really quick way to do it visually. Um, walls, while we're here in visual mode, you, know, you can just right click on a wall. Here's your settings. You can also multi-select and click different walls. And now if I open the settings, it's gonna change it for all of them. So let's just change this to star green one. And you'll see the two sectors were changed. You're gonna use the, not sectors, the two lines changed. You're gonna use the C key to clear whatever your selection is. So I hit C and everything's cleared. You're gonna learn to just, you're gonna hit C all the time because you're gonna have stuff selected that you don't realize and then you're gonna end up editing the wrong thing. Happens all the time. It's just kind of a workflow with UDB is learning to hit C whenever you're trying to change what you're doing. Another thing you can do is hold the shift key and select a wall and it's gonna select all adjacent walls that have the same texture. So I just grabbed these two green ones and that's an easy way to, you know, just edit a whole bunch of lines at once without having to go through and, you know, find them, click them one at a time. You can control, or you can copy paste, control C, control V. So I want to change these back to star tan. I can point at this wall, copy, go over here, paste, go over here, paste. A lot of this stuff is pretty basic. Yeah, I don't know if you'd figure it out or not, so I'm just going to call it out and we'll be basic and... We'll get into more meat and bones as things go along. Or one last thing as far as your starting area. And this is for multiplayer support. So let me go back to map mode with the Q key. I only have one player start. This is fine if you're targeting a single player only wad. Um, this is a pet peeve of mine though. I would say always include co-op starts because you never know who's going to play co-op. And if you don't have all the player starts, depending on the source port, bad things happen. They may telefrag each other, or the game may crash, or, you know, just, just spend the extra minute and get your other player starts. So I'm going to hit T to go to thing mode. Here is player one start. I'm going to right click to create a new one, change that to player two start. Here's player three start. And here's player four start. So yeah, go back to visual mode, and now we have four player starts. And if anyone plays this wad in co-op, they will be happy and not not kill each other when they spawn and they won't be mad at you. Anyway, that's it for part one. 